Hello everyone, and welcome to another wonderful lesson with Mr. Wheezy. So, we are getting into similar polygons. Um, last time we just did a little bit with ratios um, and proportions. Today we're going to apply those uh, and help determine what makes these polygons similar. But first, kind of a review from last time with the kickoff. Again, we're going to cross multiply those. So x times 7 would be 7x, and 5 times 12 would give you your 60. So if you divide by 7 then, x equals 60 over 7. And we're just going to leave it as that fraction. If you want to find what the decimal would be, you can go ahead and divide that out. You're going to be 8 point something. But in order for two polygons to be similar, two things have to happen. Well, one, corresponding angles have to be congruent. That also means that corresponding sides then are proportional. So they're going to be the same proportion how the sides will match up, but all the angles have to be congruent that match up. So to get that uh, proportional uh, corresponding sides, we're going to find that similarity ratio of the lengths of those sides. So first off, just if we know these two are similar. Well, what do we know? Well, the measure of angle E is going to be right here. It has to equal what? Well, it has to be what angle A is, because uh, corresponding angles have to be congruent, so that makes us 53 degrees. The other part of this is AB over EF, so AB is this side over EF, would be the same thing as AD over, well, what matches up with this bottom, but EH. Let me write that better. E, H is the side that would match. So you have to look for, okay, how are these matching up? Where are my angles that are supposed to be the same? Where are my sides that are supposed to be proportional? You go from there. So now to determine whether these are proportional, we have to look at a few different things. Well, first off, we're looking at angles. Well, we have a set of angles that are congruent. We have a second set of angles that are congruent. And we have a third set of angles that are congruent. So... So for the number one part, all three sets of congruent angles. So that's something you always need to kind of check. Always look for those, you know, are these three sets of angles congruent? The next part is you need to look at the, uh, the sides and see if, do we have the same similarity ratio? So I'm going to start with my bottoms first. So A to C over A is the single to C being the triple. Single to triple would be F to D. Well, if we put that into a ratio, we have our top being 18, our bottom being 24. If we reduce that, we would get three fourths. So, in order for this to be similar, every set of sides that we look at like this, those have to be the same ratio in the end. So, the next one we could do is AB. Well, AB is this side going from the single to the double. So, single to the double would be FE. So, we're going to compare those lengths. So, AB is 15. FE is 20. Well, if we reduce that again, we're going to get three fours. So, so far, so good. So our last set of sides. So we've done AC, AB, we have BC left. BC is the double to the triple, so double to the triple would be ED. So BC is 12, ED is 16, and again, if we reduce that, we're going to get our three fours. So this is golden. This is what we want. So our sides are proportional, so we can say that triangle A, B, C is going to be similar. Similar, we use just one squiggle. Congruent, we have the equal sign underneath the squiggle, but with similar, we just use the squiggle. And the other triangle that's similar to would be F, E, D. So similarity statement, we use the squiggle instead of the congruent signal, sig symbol 
of the squiggle over an equal sign. That's how you tell. So three sets of sides, same proportion. All three sets of angles are congruent. We're good to go. So if we know these two figures are congruent. Now this is kind of cut off. You can't really see it, but um, we're dealing with Q, this is R, this is S, and that's D. So these are what we know. So to find the value of X, we're looking at TS is what we're going to look for. So TS. How is TS compared to the other side? Well, TS goes with ON. So now we need a second set. Now we could use NM here because it's got a value, but we don't have it on that corresponding side over here. So you don't want to use that one. You want to use sides that have a complete set of numbers. So if TS was on top, we're going to do QR then on top on that side. QR matches up with LM. From here we're going to put our numbers and solve. So TS we know is X. ON is 2. On the other side, we know QR is 6, LM is 5. So from here, solve in proportion like normal, cross multiply. 5X would equal 12, so X would equal 12 over 5, which would be about 2.4 as a decimal. All right, a couple more. You use this to reduce as well. So a painting is 24 inches by 36 inches long. The length of a postcard reduction is 6 inches. How wide is the postcard? So we have to make this match up. So we're going to take this painting or try to have it on a postcard that's going to be a different set of lengths and make it smaller. Now we could do this the other way. We could also go and make it bigger. But for right now, last one we're going to make smaller. So if we set up, we have 24 over our 36. So with over length in this case we have to set the other side up the same thing so it says length is going to be six so length is on our bottom and then postcard is going to go or width is going to be the top we don't know so we put an x and again cross multiply and solve uh so we have 36 x equaling six times 24 before 144 divide that in by 36 X then equal four inches. So that 24 by six painting, we're gonna reduce down to a four by six postcard. Now the last thing we're gonna talk about is the golden rectangle. A golden rectangle is a rectangle that can be divided into a square and a rectangle that is similar to the original rectangle. So if this is our rectangle, we can make this into a square, and so this x and y would be similar to this x and this y, but switched. So it'll be a similar ratio in that. So excluding the square part, this rectangle here will be similar to the big rectangle, is what that's doing. Now, the golden ratio, so that length of this one here being to this one here, is 1.618 to 1. So this side will be 1.618 times longer than what this side would be. And this side, or this, yeah, this Y would be, yeah. So that's the ratio between the small rectangle and the big rectangle. The bigger one is 1.618 times bigger than the small. So we're always going to set that up 1 over 1.618. So a golden rectangle has a longer side of 30 inches. How long does the other side have to be to achieve that golden ratio? So golden rectangle, longer side of 30. So our 30 would go here with a longer side because 1.618 bigger than 1. That's how we're comparing the long. So we put that one there. If it was said it's a smaller side, we put it on top. Longer side, we put it on the bottom with the 1.618. Cross multiply and solve. 1.618x equaling 30. So X would then equal 15.5414 inches to be exact. 
So in other words, X is about 15.5 inches. And that's it. So, uh, questions, comments, concerns, please let me know. Uh, shoot me a message on Google Classroom or my email. Or you can pan me, but just know that pans I uh, don't check as often. Um, you can do that. Um, but until next time, we'll talk to you later, guys.